everyone. Good day to all of you. Your instructor again here, Engineer Edwin B. Rosalena. For another set of our refresher problems. So in this video, we have problems in structural design and construction. So problem number one. Two channels, C, 250 by 30, are latticed together and used as a column section as shown in figure SD-150. The length of the column is 6 meters. Assume bottom end is restrained from translation and rotation, while the top end is unrestrained from both rotation and translation with the K value equal to 2.0. Use Fy equal to 250 megapascals and E equal to 200 gigapascals. Use ASD method of analysis. So we have here the properties of 1C250 by 30. Question number one, we have here. Compute the distance B back-to-back -back of the channel so that it will be equally strong in both axes. Question number two, compute the slenderness ratio of the column section. And question number three, compute the allowable compressive stress of the column. So solution, so to answer number one, we have the column section here consists of two channel sections na so set back to back to each other with a distance of b so question number one what is the distance b so that the column section is equally strong in both axes so considering one channel section we have the useful properties in this question so, the moment of inertia with respect to x is 32.7 times 10 to the 6. Moment of inertia with respect to y, 1.16 times 10 to the 6. Then we have the distance x, that is the distance from the centroid of the channel section to its back, equal to 15.3 mm. Then the area of 1 Channel section is 3,780 square millimeters. Okay, so considering the whole column section, the two channels that we have, for the column section to be both equally strong in the two axes, then the moment of inertia with respect to x should be equal to the moment of inertia with respect to y. Now, this IX and IY here, take note that these values are just for one section. Uh, but for two column sections set in this position, so we have the moment of inertia with respect to X, and then we have the moment of inertia with respect to Y. So, IX should be equal to IY. Okay, so IX is just twice of this value here because... The moment of inertia of 1 is 32.7 times 10 to the 6. So for 2 channels, just multiply this by 2. So that is Ix. But for Iy, we will apply the transfer formula for the moment of inertia. Because the y-axis here does not coincide with the centroid of the column or channel section. Okay, so we have moment of inertia with respect to y of one section plus area times the distance square. And this distance is from the centroid of the channel section to the y-axis. And then multiply it by 2. So we have that here, na? twice of 1.16 times 10 to the 6 plus area 3780, then the distance is B over 2 plus X, where X is equal to 15.3 mm. Then we square it. 
So from this equation, the value of B can be solved equal to 152 mm. Question number two, compute the slenderness ratio of the column section. So the slenderness ratio is KL over R, where R is the radius of generation. So, since the column section is equally strong in both axes, I can just use any of the two uh, axes. Either I have Rx or Ry. So, I will just use the slenderness ratio of the x-axis. So, for Rx, that is square root of Ix over A. And the Ix is twice of 32.7 times 10 to the 6. Then over twice of the area, 3780. So the radius of gyration with respect to x is 93 mm. Uh, then for the slenderness ratio, KL over Rx. So K is 2 for the given n conditions. So 2, then the length is 6,000, 6 meters now, convert to mm. Then Rx as computed, 93 mm. So, KL over Rx is equal to 129.03, the slenderness ratio of the column section. And third question, compute the allowable compressive stress of the column. So, the allowable stress of the column depends on the comparison of the ratio, uh, comparison of the values of the slenderness ratio of the column section and the limiting slenderness ratio. So, the limiting slenderness ratio, C sub C, is equal to the square root of 2 pi squared E over Fy. And this value divides the column into long column and intermediate. Huh? So, lesser to this value of the KL over R, the column is considered to be intermediate. And uh, larger to this value of the KL over R, the column is long. Okay? So, we have here C sub C equal to 2 pi squared E over Fy. And C sub C is 125.66. So, if you compare KL over R, which is 129.03, I think. Huh? Uh, so, greater than C sub C, 125.66. So, therefore, the column is long. And for long columns, the allowable compressive stress is given by the formula Fa equal to 12 pi squared E over 23 KL over R squared. Where KL over R is the KL over Rx that we have computed. So, Fa is 12 pi squared E is 200,000 megapascal. So, 23 times 129.03 squared. And the allowable compressive stress of the column Fa is equal to 61.86 mega pascals. Problem number two. The decorative concrete beam with a tubular cross-section is simply supported on a span of 4.5 meters. The concrete compressive strength, Fc prime, is equal to 34 megapascals, and unit weight of concrete is 24 kilonewton per cubic meter. Use Fr equal to lambda 0.62 square root of Fc prime with lambda equal to 0.85. So question number one. Compute the cracking moment of the tubular section if it has an outside diameter of 600 mm and an inside diameter of 300 mm. And number two, in addition to its own weight, what uniform load could the beam safely carries before it cracks? And question number three, compute the cracking moment if the 300 mm diameter hollow core is replaced by a hollow square, 300 mm by 300 mm. Okay, so this is about cracking of concrete. Na? So that is, we consider an unreinforced concrete. 
Na? So, the material of our beam is simply concrete. Na? So, no reinforcement there. So, if you recall, FR is the modulus of rupture of the concrete or that is the allowable strength of concrete in tension. Na? So, this is the cracking stress of concrete. So, for number one, compute the cracking moment. We can first compute the modulus of rupture. So, lambda 0.62 square root of Fc prime, where lambda is given 0.85 and Fc prime is 34 megapascals. So, this is equal to 3.073 megapascals. Okay, then we have our tubular section. So, the radius is 300 and then we have a hollow core with a diameter of 300. So, the moment of inertia here is equal to pi r to the fourth over 4 minus pi r to the fourth of the hollow core. Huh? So, pi 300 to the fourth minus 150 to the fourth over 4. So, I here is 5.964 times 10 to the 9 millimeters to the fourth. Okay? So, after that, we can have the formula MCR, or this is the cracking moment, na? equal to FRI over CT. Uh, uh, by the way, this is simply stress FR equal to MC over I. Na? So, if you solve for FR, this is MCR times CT over I. Or that is our bending stress formula, MC over I. Uh, then, solving for M, then have a subscript CR meaning cracking, na? so that is FR, modulus of rupture times I over C sub T. Where C sub T is the distance from the centroid of the section to the outermost fiber in tension. So this is simply supported, so the outermost fiber in tension is the lowest portion. So C sub T here is equal to 300. Uh, so we can now substitute values, na? MCR equal to FR equal to 3.073 times I with the value here over C sub T which is 300. And MCR is equal to 61.09 kilonewton meter. Ah, by the way, the answer here is in newton millimeter. Divide by 1 million so that we can have kilonewton meter. Uh, question number 2 we have here. In addition to its own weight, what uniform load could the beam safely carry before it cracks? Uh, so, the beam is simply supported on a span of 4.5 meters. So, if we let W sub B equal to the weight of the beam, uniformly distributed, na? then W equal to the additional uniform load that the beam could carry, then W sub T is the total uniform load. So, the moment here is equal to WL squared over 8, where we use the total uniform load and then we use the cracking moment. So, we solve first the total uniform load before the beam cracks. So, this is 61.09 equal to W sub T. L is 4.5 squared over 8. So, the total uniform load is 24.13 kN per meter. Now, we can solve for the weight of the beam. Na? So, that is hollow section with outer diameter 600 mm. And hollow core diameter, the hollow portion is 300 mm. Uh, so, weight of beam is 24, then pi over 4, 0.6 square minus 0.3 square. So, this is 5.089 kN per meter. Uh, so, the total uniform load is equal to the weight of beam plus the additional uniform load that the beam could carry. So, substituting values, we can solve for W equal to 19.05 kN per meter. Okay, question number three. We have there. 
Compute the cracking moment if the 300 mm diameter hollow core is replaced by a hollow square, 300 mm by 300 mm. Okay, so the hollow core now is replaced by a hollow square, 300 by 300. So we can solve for the moment of inertia. Na? So I equal to pi times 300 to the fourth over 4 for the outer circle, minus for the inner hollow rectangle or square, 300 times 300 cube over 12. So I is 5.687 times 10 to the 9. Uh, then, still, we use FR equal to the value that we have computed. So, MCR is equal to FRI over CT, uh, where C sub T is still equal to 300. So, substituting values, MCR is equal to 58.25 kilonewton meter. Okay, so that is about cracking of concrete, na? Problem number three, for the frame shown in figure ST-654, use E equal to 200 gigapascals and I equal to 320 times 10 to the 8 millimeters to the fourth. Compute the vertical displacement at D. Second question, compute the horizontal displacement at D. And third question, compute the slope of D. Uh, so this is deflection, displacement, and rotation of frame. Huh? Uh, so we can use the virtual work method in solving for the displacement. Okay. So for our first step, we will consider the real system. So that is, we form the moment equation of each segment of the frame with the real loads. So we have here a uniformly distributed load, 20 kilonewton per meter. And then we have a concentrated load of 150 kilonewton at this point C here. Okay, so we have a fixed support at A. So we can have the vertical reaction. So by inspection, the vertical reaction A sub Y here is also equal to 150. Then the horizontal reaction AX is equal to 20 times 10, so that is 200. And the moment at A is equal to 150 times 5 plus 20 times 10 times 5, so that is 1,750. So the computation of the reactions is not shown here, no? Uh, anyway, we can just easily solve this by inspection. Okay, so we will now form the moment equation of each segment of the frame. So AB, so we have the reactions at A, AY, AX, and the moment at A. Uh, then we can have the reactions at B. Huh? So we cut at B and this is a rigid connection at joint B. So we have also BY equal to 150. Uh, then we have the moment. Huh? Uh, moment here is equal to 1750 plus 200 times 10 times 5 minus 200 times 10. And that moment is equal to 750. Uh, I hope you know already how to solve the moment at B here. Na? So sum up moments at B. Uh, then that is equal to 1750 plus 20 times 10 times 5 minus 200 times 10. So that is 750. Now, there is no horizontal force acting at B because this 200 to the left is counteracted by the 200 times 10 or 20 times 10. Huh? So, 20 times 10 is also 200. So, there is no horizontal reaction at B. Uh, so, cut AB at a distance of X from 
point A. Uh, then form here the moment equation of member AB. So, moment AB is simply equal to 200 times x minus 1750 minus 20 times x times x over 2. Uh, I write it here. Na? Uh, so, moment AB is equal to 200 times x minus 20 times x times x over 2 minus 1750. And this is equal to 200x minus 10x squared minus 1750. And then, we have member B, C, D. Uh, so, we can transmit the reactions at point B on member B, C, D. So, we have the vertical reaction, 150 upward. No? Same value but opposite in direction. This is clockwise moment. Once uh, 750. So we have here a counterclockwise moment equal to 750. Okay. Uh, then for member BC, we can cut member BC at distance X and then we form the moment equation of member or segment BC. So the moment BC is simply 150 times X minus 750. Uh, consider segment BC. Uh, cut at the distance x from point D, uh, then form the moment equation, MDC. Uh, no load, no moment, na? so MDC is equal to zero. Uh, so we have the moment equations of each segment of the real system. Uh, so we will now answer one by one the question. So for number one, compute the vertical displacement at D. So, we have now the virtual system. So, in the virtual system, consider the frame without any load except the one unit load, so in this case, one kilonewton load in the direction of the required displacement. So, so since we have the vertical displacement at D, so we assume that the vertical displacement at D is downward, so I will apply a downward force of 1 unit, meaning 1 kilonewton, to point D. Uh, then I will form the moment equation of each segment of the frame with this 1 unit load. So by inspection, we have the vertical reaction at A, so that is AY equal to 1. Na? There is no uh, horizontal load, so there is no horizontal reaction at A. But there is a moment reaction at A, and that is 1 times 10. So this is 10 kilonewton meter. And then we can form the moment equation. Uh, so we have here segment AB. So we have the vertical reaction and the moment reaction here. Uh, cut. Uh, by the way, here we have also 1. And then we have the counterclockwise or clockwise moment 10 huh? to counteract the counterclockwise moment at A. Uh, cut between A and B a distance X, then form the moment equation AB. So in the figure, the moment equation AB is simply equal to negative 10. Uh, so I have here MVAB, meaning virtual moment. Huh? Uh, of segment AB. Uh, then I have member BCD. So transmit the reactions at B. So we have upward one unit. We have the clockwise, counterclockwise moment 10. Uh, cut segment BC at a distance X. Then form the moment equation MVBC. So the virtual moment of segment BC is equal to x minus 10. Huh? Uh, some up moments here. So, 1 times x minus 10. So, we have x minus 10. Uh, cut at, at CD, uh, a distance of x from D, then we have the virtual moment DC. Uh, so, we have the one unit load. So, virtual moment DC, MVDC equal to negative x. 
So, to answer the displacement, vertical displacement at D, so we have the, our virtual work equation. Huh? So, one unit times the displacement is equal to the summation of the integral of MVM over EI dx. Uh, so, multiply uh, virtual moment and the real moment in each segment. Okay, so we have the vertical displacement at point D is equal to 1 over EI, factor 1 over EI. Na? So if you recall, MB in segment AB is negative 10. Then this is the real moment of segment AB. Uh, then the limits here is from 0 to 10 because our segment AB is from 0 at point A to 10 meters at point B. Uh, then we have the virtual moment of segment BC, x minus 10. Then real moment of segment BC, 150, x minus 750. Limits from 0 to 5, that is from B to C. Now take note, for segment CD, the real moment of segment CD is 0. So if you multiply the uh, virtual moment by the real moment, which is 0, then we have 0 for that na, integral. Uh, so, using the calculator or evaluating the integral, we have this value. Uh, and the unit here is in kilonewton meter cube. So, if we substitute our values of EI and convert kilonewton meter cube into newton millimeter cube, na, so multiply by 1000 to the power 4, then 200, 1,000 megapascal, then 320 times 10 to the 8 as given in the problem. Na? Uh, so we have here 19.4 mm. Okay. So for question number 2, compute the horizontal displacement at D. So the horizontal displacement at D, na? The real system will not change. What will change is only the virtual system. Because notice in the virtual system, or take note, we apply a one unit load to the point where the displacement is required and in the direction of the displacement. So for horizontal displacement at T, so the virtual system is the frame without any load. And then since we are asked for the horizontal displacement at D, so I can apply a one unit load either directed to the right or to the left. Uh, so it depends on the assumption. Okay. So I will have one unit load directed to the left. Uh, so I will now solve for the reactions at A. So, I have AX equal to 1 unit. And there is no AY because there is no vertical load on the frame. I have the moment at A, and that is to counter the moment produced by the 1 unit load, 1 times 10. So, this is 10 directed clockwise. So, I can now form the virtual moment of each segment. Uh, so, AB, so I have here 1 and the clockwise moment 10. Uh, so, I have here also 1 and then the counterclockwise moment 10. Cut at the distance x from point A and then form the MVAB. So, virtual moment at segment AB for segment AB. Huh? So, notice the virtual moment um, segment AB is equal to 10 minus x. Na? So 10, then x times 1. Uh, so we have here 10 minus x. Then consider segment BCD. So transfer the reactions. 1 directed to the right. Then we have the moment 10 directed clockwise. So I have here. Na? Uh, so cut at segment BC, then form MVBC. Uh, so in the figure, MVBC is equal to 10. Uh, cut at CD, a distance x from D, then form the moment equation. 
and MVDC is equal to zero. Uh, so, we have now our equation or the virtual equation. 1 times the horizontal displacement of D is equal to the summation of the integral of the virtual moment times the real moment over EI dx for each segment. Uh, so, horizontal displacement at D equal to 1 over EI. So, virtual moment 10 minus X, real moment, then limits from 0 to 10 for segment AB. Okay, then we have the virtual moment for BC, then real moment for BC, 150X minus 750, limits from 0 to 5. Uh, still, our moment of the real system for CD is 0. So, the third part here for CD is 0. Uh, so, evaluating the integral, so we have negative 81 to 50 kilonewton meter cube. Okay, then we convert kilonewton meter cube into newton millimeter cube, then divide by EI. Uh, so, we have negative 12.7. Now, what's the meaning of the negative sign here? So, the meaning of the negative sign is that the assumed direction of the displacement that is to the left is not correct. Uh, so meaning, the correct displacement here, 12.7, and that is directed to the right. Uh, so, no problem if you will assume or your assumption of the direction of the displacement is wrong. It will just turn out to be negative in our computation. Okay? Uh, then, the last question for this problem is to compute the slope at D. Uh, so, again, the real system will not change. So, we will have to consider the virtual system. So, if we have the slope of a point or the rotation, no? slope or rotation at a point, then we place a one-unit rotation at that point. Huh? So, since we are asked to compute for the slope of D, so we place here a one-unit rotation at D, so that is 1 kilonewton meter. So, assuming that the rotation of D is clockwise. Uh, so, we can solve for the reactions at A due to the given 1 unit rotation. So, this is 1. Na? No horizontal reaction, no vertical reaction. So, we can now consider the virtual moments of each segment. So, we have AB. So, we have reaction here. Uh, cut AB a distance X, then solve for the moment MVAB. Uh, so, MVAB is equal to negative 1. Consider BCD. So, transmit. So, we have a counterclockwise moment at B. Uh, cut BC, then form the moment MVBC. And in the figure, MVBC is equal to negative 1. Cut CD. Uh, then we have the virtual MVDC. Uh, so MVDC is also equal to negative 1. Uh, so, use our virtual equation. One unit rotation times theta D, which is the rotation of point D equal to the summation of MVM over EI dx for each segment. So, the rotation at D equal to negative 1, virtual moment AB, then real moment AB, limits from 0 to 10. Virtual moment BC, then real moment BC, limits from 0 to 5. Still, the third segment DC is 0. Na? Because the virtual moment or the real moment CD is 0. Uh, so, compute, we have 12,708.33. This is in kilonewton meter square. And if we substitute EI, so 12,708.33 convert to newton millimeter square uh, over EI. Uh, so, this is equal to 0 0.002 radian. Okay, so we have three problem situations presented in this video. Na? 
Uh, so we have the columns in steel design, the ASD method, then we have the cracking of concrete, and then we have the displacement and rotation of a point on a frame. So that ends our discussion for this video. So thank you very much for joining me or viewing this video. Na? So stay tuned for the next videos to come.